Welcome back everyone to the channel. In this video, I want to make my dream simulator setup. I've been accumulating different parts over the last four or five years basically, but I've never really just put it together into one cohesive, like just really cool badass simulator. So in this video, we're gonna do that. So the gist of what we're gonna do is combine my pro sim, which I've had since 2017, I believe. Um, and we're gonna combine that with my normal desk setup. I bought this monitor specifically for the simulator, which is why right now it's on wheels. And I basically just roll it back and forth between this desk and the simulator whenever I wanna use it. And that's worked fairly well, except for the positioning of the monitor is just not ideal. So one of the issues I have right now with that monitor stand is it's just far too back and far too high away from my actual line of sight. The other thing is I could switch to VR, but I've tried it before and the latency is a little bit too high and it just becomes uncomfortable after a while. I definitely want to have VR as a part of this new sim build, but mainly for the purposes of using it as an experience and a way to make cool videos. Now VR is also really taxing on the computer. So one of the things I want to upgrade is this old computer that came with the ProSim originally, which was great at the time, but it definitely isn't going to run VR and it's not going to run this new Samsung G9 monitor, which can go up to 240 Hertz. But the good news is I actually prepared for this and I built an entirely new computer about uh, just over a year ago now. I designed it exactly for traveling. It's a mini ITX power build. So it's got, I mean, if you want to get really technical about it, a 5950X and an NVIDIA 3090 packed into a computer case which fits inside of my carry-on suitcase. So when I go back and forth to the States, I have one computer rather than two. So as I said, like I kind of have all the pieces of the puzzle here. I just need to fit them all together. So without further ado, let's try and fix the disaster room. So cue the montage. I am genuinely so happy at how that looks. Like this room has been a disaster basically since I moved in. I basically just didn't move in and didn't fully unpack, but this looks so much better. But yeah, really liking the look of this so far. That is until you see the reality of the situation, which is that everything is basically just plastered over the entire apartment. Like there's literally no room left. So mission is critical. All right, so a little bit of an update for you guys. We are a lot closer. The standing desk is built. This was what was holding up the build. It's been probably about a week since the last update I gave you, actually maybe more, almost two weeks. Uh, the desk took a while to come in, but it's finally here. And this is so cool actually. But yeah, I've also organized the entire closet here with all the racing stuff. So I've got some helmets there and all my race suits are in there as well. So this is gonna be a nice cohesive place. This has freed up a lot of closet space in my like bedroom closet as well. So it's been quite useful. Next step is I'm gonna put some LEDs underneath the desk before it becomes too difficult. And then I'm gonna start mounting the monitors and everything. And then that desk is going in the living room. And then the desk I have in the living room is coming in here so I can form somewhat of an L-shaped desk here. So with that being said, back to work. Okay, so it's looking like an absolute disaster in here, but we're getting a lot closer. So all the cables and everything that was previously used on this desk are here. I just need to basically sort through them, do some cable management, waiting on a couple types to be delivered, or I don't know, cable sleeves, I guess you would call them, uh, to be delivered later tonight. So we should be able to do all that today. And then we've got the second monitor mounted. This is what I usually use as just like a side screen. Maybe I'd use it for uh, for data analysis while doing, you know, the simulator. I've never been able to use the second screen with the sim, so this will be a big upgrade. I have that on a swiveling monitor mount. Now, I would like to do that with this as well, but I have the same monitor 
in the US and I have it on one of those modern arms, but because of the extra curvature of the G9, um, this is the 1000R curve monitor, it just is too much weight for the pivot to handle and it basically just ends up drooping down. So I ended up having to essentially fix it in place, which kind of defeats the purpose of it. So I'm gonna stick with the base monitor stand for now. All right, so this is the computer I'm upgrading to from my previous sim. So if you would have seen the other computer, it's a lot bigger. It probably looks to the untrained eye like it's way more powerful than this thing, but I, basically built the most powerful computer I could possibly build. So this little beast should keep me relatively future-proofed, at least for VR, for the foreseeable future. So I optioned the desk with this computer stand. So I think this is actually gonna be really useful for kind of keeping the cables all in check underneath the desk. Now, whether or not the computer has overheating problems, as you can see, the radiator is on this side and it typically is blowing crazy heat at the top, which would obviously be blocked in here. So I'm yet to see if the thermals will be a problem considering how power dense this computer is. The thermals, at least for CPU temp, is always on the verge of thermal throttling. So it might be an issue, but let's see if it works. Several days later. Okay, so a lot of progress has been made off camera since the last update, but this is really coming together. So the standing desk is built. I had to adjust it. Originally it was there and I had the black desk on the right side, but um, it just didn't work with positioning. And when I realized the SIM, when it goes up to that desk, it's actually gonna extend really, really far on the other side. So it didn't work up against the wall. Um, but yeah, I've started doing some cable management up here. It's not perfect yet, uh, but I do have a central line running down there with these zipper cable sleeves, which are super, super useful and really easy to uh, take cables in and out of. So I'm waiting on a few more parts, mainly just Velcro and things uh, in order to really make the cables look nice. And then the next step is gonna be putting this simulator on wheels, basically these moving dollies that you see down there. So that's gonna happen later today. And then I'll be able to move the dining room table around. I've moved desks and things around. So it's really coming together. This apartment looks like completely different than it did a couple of weeks ago. Two weeks later. Okay, so big update. The sim is now in the room with some help. I mean, it was extremely heavy. We managed to get it on the moving dollies, but what we found was the carpet made it so that the sim was sliding right off, which I expected, but I didn't expect it to be as bad and as difficult to move. So we decided the sim's actually gonna be stationary and the desk itself is actually gonna move. So I've taken the feet out of it and it slides okay on the carpet as it is now, but I'm probably gonna have to go find some other method like getting wheels on the desk or something like that. But that seems to be a much more feasible solution at the moment. But we have a much bigger problem on our hands now. <laughs> So this is my new gaming PC, and I've had zero issues with this computer since the day I built it, but now that's all changed. So it's showing somebody the functionality of the standing desk, basically just showing them lift up. And then the US plug I had in here in the power socket I Velcroed to the bottom, it's in an international adapter power socket. It was a bit, a bit loose and it started pulling out and it ended up shorting out and it's clearly caused some sort of short, short in the computer. So I believe the issue is just gonna be the power supply and it should be a relatively simple fix, but I'm just praying that at least the graphics card is saved because there's no way I'm gonna find another one of these at the price I got it for and there's no way I'm paying four grand for a new GPU. So I really got my fingers crossed that it's just a power supply. I honestly can't believe it. I was this close to this whole build being done and of course something has to come up. But hopefully this is a simple fix and I just need a new power supply, but let's see. Okay, so I've managed to get the power supply out. Now the trick is plugging it in and seeing if this turns on or if it causes the circuit breaker, fuse box, whatever to go off. So this is off. So when I flip this switch, if the light goes off, then we know the power supply is the culprit. There we go. So as annoying as that is, at least we know what the problem is. So let's order one of those and then that should really be the last major component we need for this sim to finally work. Approximately 10 hours later.
Okay, <laughs> the lights are on. I think I'm safe. I'll boot it up just to be sure, but I think we're good. Crisis averted. Okay, so I put the computer back into the base station. The next thing I need to work on is redoing all the cable management in here because, well, one, the Velcro I had on here before wasn't strong enough to actually keep this up, and it was because of this power strip that it ended up shorting out the power supply in the computer. So I'm gonna replace it with a UK-specific power strip rather than this international plug that's a little bit loose. So I've also got a new power strip with surge protection and then also some new Velcro, much more heavy duty stuff. So the casters have just arrived now, so let's throw those on. All right, so as you would have seen in the last clip, I managed to organize all the cables underneath the desk with a somewhat sketchy sort of velcroing the cables to the underside, which I thought was probably a bad idea. Um, and it turns out it didn't really work. As you can see now, the cables are all starting to droop down again, and I probably wouldn't care because no one's really gonna see that, but it does start to dangle into the pedals of the simulator. So I gave it a quick try. I put the desk over the simulator. I hooked up the sim to the new computer and made sure everything's working, minus VR, that's the next step. And oh my God, it is such a massive upgrade. But I did learn a couple of things from that. One, the cable management side of things needs to be a bit better. And two, cooling is an issue both for myself and the computer. Now, most of the time, the CPU temperatures when I'm gaming on this computer, whether it's simulators or other types of game, is usually between 85 and just touching 90 degrees Celsius, and this CPU starts to thermally throttle at 90 degrees Celsius. And while I was using this sim yesterday, I reached 91, just for a short period of time before the CPU throttled back down. <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. But to me, that said, it's kind of on the edge, and it would help with a little bit more cooling. And also, while I was in the sim, I was getting extremely hot. This room, for whatever reason, is kind of just like a toaster, especially with this little space heater in the room. Even with the air conditioning on full blast, which isn't really air conditioning, it's like comfort cooling, it still gets really hot in here with this computer running at full tilt. So this is my solution. All right, let's put this together. So after those little bits you just saw, I think the sim is finally complete. So it's just behind that door. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right guys, so this is the final sim build. I mean, honestly, I could not be any happier with this thing. I've had some time to test it and do a few races in iRacing, racing. And at least with the monitor, everything is running so much more stable, running at usually over 180 frames per second, even in races, which I would have never even dreamt of with the old computer. So now the stability is higher, the frame rate's better, even my internet speed is faster because I upgraded everything. And really, I have no complaints. I even tried out the sim with VR and the VR is mind-blowingly realistic but I don't quite trust yet because I've had some black screens every once in a while. So I'm not really sure if I would go into an official iRacing race just yet with the VR, but with a bit more testing, I definitely want to give it a try. There's so many little details that went into the sim that I did include in the video, like putting all the components of the simulator on one USB hub, so there's only one cable into the computer. And there's a bunch of little things like that that I do want to go through at some point, but I want to give myself more time to get to know the sim, do a proper review where I find all the little issues with it and what I want to do next next 
And once I'm ready to do that, I will do a full review video. But in the meantime, I'm gonna do so many more simulator videos, which you can expect to see right here on the channel or on my Instagram. Definitely go check that out so you can see more sneak peeks of this thing. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and definitely subscribe if you're new around here. This video took so long to make, so I really appreciate it. With that being said, see you guys in the next one.